Welcome to the Be That Healing Girl podcast. And today we're going to talk about how to heal the root of anxious attachment. And I get this comment a lot and just asking and understanding how do you heal the root and we're going to look at the big overview of what I mean by that in order to heal your anxious attachment and relationship anxiety and what I mean by that is if you are experiencing you've read the books you've gone to therapy you've done the things the hot girl walks like you you're doing all these things but still nothing is changing then this is the episode for you so save it download it send it to a friend and let's dive in and if you're new here my name is Claire I'm a relationship coach and I love serving career 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 <laughs> word salad already career minded girlies who are slaying climbing the corporate ladder or maybe you're an entrepreneur and you have multiple businesses or you're slaying it as a mom which is also I believe the hardest job in the world and while you might be doing all those things you are sucking at relationship at being calm, cool, and collected when they're being a little distant. So if that is you, then you're on the right channel. I'm so excited that you're here. And if you're loving this episode or any other episode, hitting the five stars in Apple or Spotify means so much. Literally, it is a high five. I can feel it. When I go and check and I see a handful of those pop up, it really means a lot. Thanks for doing that. It takes two seconds. So... I'm really excited to talk about this topic because this is a, it's a big deal, okay? The root of how to heal your anxious attachment is really a huge deal. And when I think about how to heal the root, I really think about what my entire program of The Confidence Code is dedicated towards. And it's my step-by-step -step process. I'll put the link below so you can just check it out. But I really, I know that for me, when I was doing all the things, I have a long-standing history of therapy in the traditional method of counseling, of EFT therapy, of cognitive behavioral, and just honestly, and, and I'm not, this is not me dogging or ragging therapy. Like, I believe in therapy. I believe in counseling. And my reality was I, it wasn't working, okay? I just would get to the point where I would leave therapy and be like, well, can you just, somebody just tell me what the frick to do? Can just somebody tell me what the hell to do? And this is where I've, I've dedicated my life to understanding how to heal anxious attachment because honestly, what I think happens is that if you're, if you're listening to me now or you have followed me on social media for any amount of time, you are a smart person, okay? You are you you get it. You could probably go into therapy and counseling and name your traumas, line one, line two, line three, like a script. And while you might be able to do that, there's still something missing. And I wanted to do a whole podcast episode, this one, that is really kind of looking at the overview and what I do in the confidence code because I really do think it's important and really understanding what I mean at the root, okay? What I mean by at the root. So I, I just want to say this too, because I, I think it's important to understand how to heal at the root. It's important to understand like, well, what are you doing? And uh, so I was thinking about this too, because we have a property in Denver. We have uh, a real estate investment there and we were there for the summer and kind of getting things ready. And um, I am not a garden girly, okay? I don't have a green thumb, I have a black thumb. If you want me to kill something plant-wise, give it to me, I will kill it. Uh, which is very opposite of my mom. My mom is like crazy skilled at doing gardening. And when I we looked at the backyard, it was crazy. Okay, the weeds were crazy. They were huge because we haven't really done any weed picking in like a year. So Craig usually is the one that does the outside stuff. And it's like, I got this. I can help you. No big deal. So I get out there and I'm probably, uh, I, I also was out there for so long. I had burned my back. Okay, I, I don't burn. First of all, I'm Filipino. We don't burn. But I was out there for an amount of time where my back was burned. And when Craig came back, to check on me when my husband came back to look he was like Claire love you so much but uh you're not do you're not doing it right and it was the reason why I was not like getting the weeds all the way down I was kind of just like plucking them at the top which I don't know y'all I don't know I just don't garden so I didn't know and um turns out some of these roots were really freaking deep and so during that time that we were there we I thought I had got weeds 
We come back a week and a half later and it's just like the forest again. So proof in the pudding that you want to get to the root, just like a weed. And I'm not saying I hate to make that exact analogy, but it is, it can feel like a weed. It can feel, feel really intrusive when we have thoughts that we think that we're kind of solving, but really it's just the surface level. So I want to take some time and, and just go over what I go more deeply into the confidence code. So that being said, the the big kind of overarching piece around um, healing the root of your anxious attachment is deepening your understanding, okay? And so I mentioned before, you probably know your, your trauma. I'll just say that word. You know some events. You could probably, and I'll just say this as well because this is one of the ways that I thought I was healing back. And this is a, a trigger warning. I'm just going to mention something here. And if um, talking about a- uh, activities or thoughts or feelings around body image um, is activating for you, this is the time right now to maybe skip to the next episode. You've been warned. Um, but when I was deep in my eating disorder, uh, this was in my twenties, I, I felt like I would go into therapy and it, first of all, it just was a huge wall. Like I just, I didn't want to talk about it. Problem number one. Uh, and not only that, but I had done all this research around it. And this is like before the internet was really pervasive. I didn't like the, the social media landscape was like not to the caliber that it is today. And I basically was like a walking DSM-4 around, uh, I think it's a five now, DSM-5, but uh, a walking uh, book of knowledge around all the symptoms, all the the things that could go on with an eating disorder. And I would go to therapy and like I talk at this intellectual kind of service level about my symptoms and what I was experiencing and, oh, this is about control and all these other things. But I was sick as a dog. I was sick as a dog with my mental state, my emotional state, my physical state with, uh, eating and my body image. And I am just, I'm just know that very clearly from my experience with that, uh, version of how these, I, I want to call them ways that we think. Another way to say that would be neuroses. It's a neuroses. I'm also going to pull that term from A Course in Miracles, but it's a neuroses. It's how we think about something. And what I wasn't aware of then and in my healing of my relationship anxiety, I didn't really deeply understand and deeply know. And a lot of times, if you are a girly that's listening to this episode, you are very smart. And and, and it's funny because I think about a girlfriend of mine, one of my best friends, and she would say, I don't think I'm smart, but like arguably I think she's one of the smartest people I know. So you might be even saying that to yourself, like, I'm, I'm like, okay, and you've got like, you're a valedictorian, you went to a seven sister school, you've, you've got a couple of letters behind your name, you know what I'm talking about, or you've got multiple investments in businesses, like that is not for, that's, that, that it takes a really intelligent and hardworking person, okay? And so when I look at healing and really getting to the root, it's not just this surface layer parroting symptoms or mimicking or saying at the surface level what you think something is. I'm talking about a deep body felt understanding. And for me, things really shifted in healing all my neuroses when I, instead of trying to figure out the different symptoms and jump from puddle to puddle. Instead, it was a deepening of my well, a deepening of my well of understanding around what it meant to heal and what was truly going on for me emotionally, spiritually, and physically around my healing and what I what I was learning and what I was closed off to. I mean, I'll just take for example how my 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 stuckness in my eating disorder really came from I was just emotionally shut down. I had no relationship with my emotions. I truly I didn't. I I can say that now, but then I just I didn't it's like the way that I would describe this too is that you can't even know that you're numb if you, that's all you've known. So when I refer to my awakening and just, and I, that's just true. Like, I know that sounds woo-woo, but it's really true. Waking up to my, all my emotions, waking up and connecting the dots to 
why I was thinking something, why I was feeling something. And not just because this happened, but a, a, truly a body felt sense and a deepening in the well of understanding how I operate. And I do feel like that is something that is kind of lost in traditional methodologies. So why I also joke around and call, um, oh, people will say, I, what, what book do you recommend? And I'm like, oh, the shelf help book, not self help, shelf help. And don't, I know that you probably have books on healing on your book stand that are collecting dust. It's called shelf help. Because really, one of the things that has made the Confidence Code and the Healing Girl Gang, all of these ways that I support clients, is through a deepening understanding and the connection and interplay and how uh, intricate it can be to connect our mind, our body, and our spirit. It's also why, for example, you might be doing the hot girl walks. You might know something about your nervous system. And at the same time, you might be doing these practices, but you're still spiraling with your overthinking. Those, but that's because those are really two different areas that are interconnected, right? So uh, this is also why, yes, understanding kind intellectually what has happened to you is one piece. That's the mind piece. But how has your body been wired? Because it's not just your thoughts. Your thoughts and your feelings are are talking to each other. So. On a body level, how are you healing your, your? it's basically your, I call it a code, that's why I call it the confidence code, like how your actual nervous system, your body was wired to respond to thoughts. And then while your body is doing one thing, your mind is doing another thing, what is actually, how are you observing those pieces? How are you cultivating from the from from instead of being in the situation and feeling like you're in the situation which can feel i call this for clients this is hopefully relatable to you but it's being in the soup where you're in the middle of the spiral of overthinking and it feels like ariel and ursula and the little mermaid it's just like you're in this whirlpool and you can't tell up from down you feel like you're drowning where are the bubbles going just kind of feels like you're in this soup or in this whirlpool and down spiral of overthinking. One of the key interplays between body, mind, and spirit is spirit allows you to not be in the whirlpool, but instead be watching the whirlpool. So instead of being in your thoughts and in the feelings, being able to observe them, to be able to watch them, I've seen this kind of word trending detach, but, and I don't necessarily like that word all the time because to me it can feel like a closed off, which on the spectrum of healing, we can go from radically hyper independent to ah clingy, you know, and it kind of can have that same energy. But I like to to say that you are observing yourself. How are you cultivating that? So, when it comes to healing the root of anxious attachment, I really believe it is understanding and deepening your felt sense and under and breaking the pattern understanding the pattern of how your mind your body and your spirit are interplaying because they're all playing a really important part and so this is where if you're just plucking the top of the dandelion and then two weeks later or for some of you it feels like for me at least when i was not understanding the interplay of all of them i'd go to therapy i'd be fine on monday and then get in a fight on tuesday and be like what the fuck like why why and then just feeling absolutely at a loss. So healing the root is understanding that it's, and just like a root system, it's not just like the top of the dandelion or what's above the surface. So much of a root system is this deep interconnected piece of of our, our mind, our body, and our spirit. So when I look at how to heal the root of attachment, I really want you to instead wonder where, how can I deepen instead of doing this, you know, going over here and plucking the standing line of, oh, I'm doing a healing girl walk, oh, or a, a hot girl walk, oh, I'm doing a little bit of journaling, oh, I'm doing a little bit of yoga, like, all, and, I'm, and by the way, I'm not saying that that's not beneficial, but again, it's not like what you're doing, it's how you're doing it, it's not that you're not putting on makeup, it's how you're putting on makeup, you could put drugstore makeup on, I've done it, and you can look great, arguably better than somebody who doesn't know how to use the makeup that's using the top of the line, Chanel, Gucci, Too Faced, whatever, whatever fancy stuff that you use on your face. 
right? It's not about what you're using. It's how you're doing it and how you're interplaying them all together. So that being said, uh, I just wanted to give you the overview on where I really feel is so important and a starting place to how to heal the root of anxious attachment. Again, this is kind of the bigger overarching view. I'll put the link to the confidence code, which is where I really break everything down step by step down below. And I wanted to hit the mailbox. This is like truly turning out to be one of my favorite things, the hotline questions. And this is the opportunity that I answer questions from my community, the Healing Girl Gang. What's really fun about the Healing Girl Gang is that we do uh, a educational masterclass because we really can't take action on things that we don't deeply understand. So really... The masterclass is about deeply learning and understanding the topic, and the topic that is happening in November is how to navigate relationship stress so you can be secure no matter what. So excited about that coming up, and we have a new topic every single month, and when you're in the Healing Girl Gang, you get workbooks, there's implementation days, there's action steps, an action taker toolkit, because... For me, I'm an action girly. I want to know how. I want give me just tell me where to go, right? So that's what's really exciting. So let's get into this question from Jasmine, or is it Yasmin? I don't know. Um, uh, she says, "I myself am definitely anxious attachment, and from what I think I've learned, my partner is definitely dismissive. I've watched so many lives and master classes and followed so many people to finally end up here." My question is, everything seems to point to leave him if he doesn't make change to heal his attachment type and doesn't give you what you need. And in reality, yeah, that makes total sense, but I don't want to. I want to figure out how to actually make it work just because I know he cares, just not the way that I want him to. He tends to be more of an acts of service lover, which is fine, but I need quality words, quality, I need words and quality time (laughs) and physical touch. He needs space and independence and silence. We have been dating for a few years. I'm recently divorced mom, so I have my own life, and he doesn't have kids or any former wives. So our lives are different, that I didn't let him meet my kids until about a year ago. I'm not satisfied with with, with where our relationship is emotionally, and I want more, but I want it with him. So I can do the healing I need. Will it take, will it make him want to heal too? Okay, so couple of things that I think are really important. I'm just going to say the thing that's kind of jumping out at me. And basically what I'm seeing here is an orientation to him changing. And I say this with so much love, but I am here to be truthful with you. If you are, if you are focusing on somebody else changing, you are focusing on the wrong freaking thing, honey. I love you so much, but that is not going to benefit you. Why? Because you can't control that. It is out of your control. Can you can can you slip like a, like a like a robot or a ghost? I don't know, into his body, into his mind, into his feelings, and control him like a little like ratatouille? Can you? no? So so I'm just noticing a lot of this question is like a focused and oriented on him. And when we focus and orient on something that we can't control, that is right there going to make you spiral. That's going to only feed your anxiety because truthfully, you can't control that. So that would be my kind of my first thing uh, to, to look at. Like, where are you centering what you need to do around the other person? Okay. And so... And I just say that too, because for me, I came across that kind, that same thought around, well, he needs to change and he does this. And I will tell you this right now, just from an, from an energetic standpoint. And, you know, I, I like to dance between the woo, but we're here to do the work. Uh, when I say energy, I mean thoughts and emotions. That's all, that's all I mean by energy. Energy is thoughts and emotions. And P.S. is there is like no tangible thoughts and emotion meter, right? Like we're still yet to like have the technology where we have our thoughts on a big like billboard as we're thinking them. That's not what's happening. So um, when it comes to just orienting towards him making the change around 
uh, you know, how do I actually make it work? The more that I oriented towards, well, he needs to do this. And like, I, I just want to say this, like there's an, there's a feeling and an energy to it, like a pointing of the finger. You need to change. You need to do this. Like you can, I, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see me, but like you can feel it. <laughs> Just ask yourself right now, if I'm saying you need to change, you need to do it different, you, 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 like you can feel the finger point in that. And the moment, and this is also something that I work with with clients, is that the, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. If the energy behind it isn't clean, if there's charge behind it, it, it then it's, that's, it's going to blow up in your face. So from an energetic standpoint, the more that you are pointing the finger, the more disconnect you create the more opposition that you create. Automatically, the finger pointing, there's somebody at the other end. So it doesn't matter if you're in an actual fight. It doesn't matter if this is like, well, he needs to do this. Like the more that you point fingers, the more you create disconnection when healthy relationships are about creating connection. So just from that standpoint, I mean, I could get into more like technicality around it but like if you're pointing the finger that he needs to change you are creating energetically opposition he's you're right he's wrong and nobody wants to be in a relationship like I love you so much but this is just the truth nobody wants to be in a relationship where they feel like they're against you're against them okay and you're all you are also not going to feel good in that relationship because you're creating the disconnection so that's the, that's the next piece that I want to say. And I think I just want to kind of clean this up um, because you're kind of, you're going into some differences and let's just talk about that. Just because you're different doesn't mean it ha doesn't have to be a make or break unless you make it best period. You, you can be with somebody that is different. And in fact, I am with somebody who is very different. I am a Sagittarius. I got a lot of fire in my chart. Craig is earth up and down. OK, and could I and, and I've had opportunities to see our differences and how we operate differently and make that a point of separation. For example, I'm a big yogi. He likes soccer. I do not. I played soccer in like grade school. OK, I do not play soccer now. Could I made it a point of contention that he didn't come to my yoga classes? He's come to like a handful, five. And I was teaching two, three classes a week. So I could have pointed the finger and said, you need to do yoga. You don't like my stuff. You're not doing the hobby that I like. Oh, sure. It, it only becomes a thing if you make it a thing. And so when it comes to he's different, I like words of affirmation. He likes, uh, he does acts of service. Same, same right? But again, it only becomes a thing if you make it. And P.S., I don't know if you've seen, but the five love languages is a bunch of hooey, right? So it's the, so just going to say that, I mean, and I think why that was so, the five love languages was so prevalent was that people liked it and you relate to it, but it wasn't research backed. So just saying it, it, you can, you can make a difference and make it mean something uh, if you want to. But for me personally, in my experience, the differences were so small. And I, if I wanted to focus on them, of course, it could have been a big deal. But really, I cared about who he was, the character that he came to the relationship with, his willingness. Now, just because he was willing, did it change overnight? Hell no. Hell no. In fact, we had this interaction yesterday that I literally could have just fallen on my knees and said, wow, like this is... We have worked so hard for this freaking thing. The thing was I spilled some seltzer water like all over the place. And my inner little girl was like, oh, my God. And he just was so calm. And it's like, it just was an accident. It's OK. And like, ah, I would have died for us to get to that place where we both just could see through an accident. And anyway, it's only a thing if you make it. I hope that supports you. And again, like we've got. We've got more support in the Healing Girl Gang if you want to get some coaching around it. I am sending you all so much love. Look at, it's so easy to not look at the context of our relationships. And just like a deep root system, you want to look at the whole thing. All right? I'm sending you so much love, angels. Mwah.